Eric Baker, the naturopath, thanks for coming back. Cooking food or raw food, what's better? Well, interesting studies conducted at Harvard University and the University of San Francisco. A place I've always wanted to go to. Sounds like a nice place. So what they did there is they, well, we already know that the microbiome is influenced a lot, you know, by different types of foods. But what research hadn't really looked at until this point, you know, proper scientific research was how uh, cooked food could affect the gut in one way and raw food in another way. So they did some rodent studies, again, you know, uh, rat studies and mice studies, which are typical. So they fed raw meat and cooked meat, raw uh, sweet potato and cooked sweet potato to see what would happen to the microbiome of these animals you know, when they gave them that. And they found incredibly no discernible difference between the raw meat or the cooked meat on how that was affecting the bacteria in the gut. But they found a significant difference between the raw sweet potato um, and the cooked sweet potato. And the researcher concluded basically that what they believe happened, of course, is the digestion primarily took place in the small intestine. So with the raw potato, that would mean that stuff was moved further down, you know, digested at slightly different stages down the digestive tract. It wasn't all consumed higher up. Now, they also found that the raw uh, sweet potato and other raw vegetables can contain certain compounds that can make microbe life really uncomfortable and sick. So some foods need to be cooked. In my opinion, tubers are always cooked. Look at the indigenous peoples. They're not stupid. I mean, they didn't need apple products to tell them how to cook food. They didn't go on to Google to Google something in, in the Amazon, did they? So if you look traditionally at people from the Amazon region with the tubers and potatoes, the cassava, it was all processed in a particular way, cooked for a certain amount of time and scrubbed and boiled and rinsed. They knew how to prepare tubers and they still do today. We're pretty dumb. We do stuff in microwaves and things like that, but they actually cooked on open fires and knew how long to cook a tuber to get the maximum benefit from it. Sweet potato needs cooking. I don't think it's a food you really can eat raw. But from my experience with sweet potato, it's exceptionally good for the large intestine. I see people who eat uh, sweet potato regularly here in New Zealand tend to have a much better health than people who don't eat sweet potato at all. So I definitely see some significant effects there. So I always recommend people. Sweet potato is one of my favorite of the root vegetables. So it's definitely worth eating a little bit here or there. But try it cooked, try it steamed. There are different ways you can cook tubers like that. I'll go a lot more into uh, the preparation of sweet potato when I do some cooking stuff coming up soon next year. So the question was, can food affect, cooking food affect our gut bacteria? Yes, it can. I like raw meat. People find it quite weird, but I like eating raw beef, like raw mince or raw red meat. I like the texture, the taste. I've done that now all my life. In Holland, where I come from, it's not uncommon for a person to have a piece of bread and have beef, tat beef tatar on there, so raw mince on, on the bread. Okay, So it's, a, again, probably a cultural thing, but I've grown used to eating raw, raw meat. I like it. Some people eat raw fish. I mean, raw sashimi. It's a fantastic food, raw fish. If you can, you can eat it with a bit of vinegar, it's very tasty. And again, if you look around the world, many populations, many cultures have eaten raw foods or cooked foods for many years. It's not just the preparation of the food that governs the gut. Okay? To me, it's the habits that you create over many, many years that will lean you towards eating a certain way, whether you eat stir-fry or raw partially cooked or boiled or whatever way you want to eat it, you know. But there is no doubt, in my opinion, from where I'm sitting, my experience, partially cooked food, it makes, makes a lot of sense here. Not to cook foods all the way through, not to overcook them or not to undercook them, but to partially cook them. Because I think that gives your digestive juices and enzymes definitely the ability to chow down on that food, but it doesn't destroy a lot of the beneficial properties of that food or the phytochemicals that those foods contain that are beneficial for our health. When we embalm foods, okay, deep fry them, I call that embalming. When we embalm foods, we nuke them, we, we destroy foods. But interesting, I read studies on microwave also that show mixed, mixed results. Some microwave studies I've looked at say very, very little difference in nutritional content with microwaving. Others say destruction of nutritional content. So. I'm not a fan of microwave cooking. I mean, even though science now says it's okay, I still prefer to steam things or boil things. But my favorite you know, instrument, as you'll see one day, is my wok. I love wok cooking. And a guy called Ken Hom, 
I think he's from China many years ago. I looked at a lot of Ken's TV programs on cooking and I've been a, a big fan of stir fry ever since. I'll show you guys a lot of tricks and tips I've picked up on stir fry cooking over the years. I can make a superb um, Asian dish for you guys in 10, 15 minutes. It doesn't take long to make something that's restaurant quality. It tastes awesome, it smells great, and I think it's really good for the gut. And that's what cooking's all about to me. Highest quality ingredients, fast processing of the food, quick cooking, and then enjoying that food. Especially if you can take it from the garden to the table within half an hour. I mean, how can you lose, you know? You're gonna get a lot of nutrition that way. So, am I a fan of raw food? Yes, I am. Am I a fan of cooked food? Yes, I am. I'm a fan of all sorts of foods. As long as it's healthy food, prepared in the right way, but some foods are just not meant to be cooked. For example, like sprouts. You don't cook sprouts. I mean, who cooks sprouts? You don't boil them or steam them. or You put them in the food towards the end, or you put them on a sandwich or something like that. But cooking with sprouts, especially alfalfa sprouts, seems a bit weird to me. So there you have it. Thanks for tuning in. And if you want my free candida report, don't forget to click on the link below. Thank you.